Hello and welcome to World Insight with me, Kian Wei. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's recent visit to China, the first time since he took office in 2021, proved to be productive. China and Germany agreed to step up cooperation in trade and investment, manufacturing and COVID-19 response. They sought better mutual trust despite a complex global landscape. And they exchanged views on issues of common concern. What does the visit tell us about China-German relations now? On this, I talk exclusively to Rudolf Scharpen, the former German Federal Minister of Defense. Take a look. What is your personal assessment of the visit by German Chancellor Scholz and his entourage to China? It was a very important meeting uh, for both sides, I guess, uh, to deepen understanding, uh, to uh, strengthen cooperation, and to make sure that international and other tensions are not uh, escalating. Germany needs a comprehensive international strategy, which is embedded in the European Union as a member and as a strategy. And for this, uh, Germany is very much uh, interested in uh, cooperation also with China, not yeah. exclusively, but we exactly know China is a very big nation, very important partner, and indispensable if it comes to global issues. Mm. How do you see, you know, the policy toward China is now in the making in Germany with this trip? No, it's, uh, I, I slightly disagree. It's not in the making. It is in a readjustment. Uh, and uh, based on uh, what we experience, both nations, both governments experience in the last uh, five decades of our diplomatic uh, relationships. Uh, having said this, uh, I would uh, recommend uh, something like a priority uh, of how to handle uh, international issues. First and for foremost, uh, global challenges. That is uh, climate change, that is peace, uh, that is um, uh, food and security, uh, that is supply chains, many, many other things. Uh, not to forget health. Then we have something bilateral. Bilateral has uh, a double layer that is uh, Germany and China, but it's also Europe and China. And thirdly, we have some things to do at home, uh, both nations. Uh, we are facing demo demographic uh, changes. We are facing uh, uh, challenges like uh, how to uh, guarantee innovation, mm. uh, how to make our uh, economies greener, more sustainable, how to ensure uh, that people's life is getting better, although the international environment is not in favor of this uh, in general. There are some, uh, let's say, threats. Uh, having said this, I think both nations uh, and Europe and China can contribute uh, in a mutual uh, interest uh, to global challenges as well as to uh, deepening the uh, ties and the, yeah. uh, their bilateral relationships and then uh, they have a, a space uh, to do their homework, so to say. So it sounds like, to me, the undertone of your answer, Mr. Minister, is that we've got enough things on our hand to deal with the crisis, global ones and domestic uh, issues as well, that we do not have the time and we shouldn't waste our energy on confrontation. It seems that that's what you're trying to indicate. Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, it's, it's a nice conclusion. Yes, we have some fundamental differences, but... Uh, I remember uh, a conference uh, in, in 1955 where your former Prime Minister Xu Enlai said, let's uh, look for the things we have in common and we can cooperate on uh, and uh, put all the other things aside. We know about the fundamental differences, political, legal system, freedom and so on. But uh, given all the global challenges and the homework we have to do, I think we have to prioritize and manage the differences in a way that partnership, competition, and global cooperation is possible and is uh, deepening. Mm. Very interesting, you quoted the former Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai. If you look at the readout coming from the Chinese uh, Foreign Ministry, the Chinese President meeting his uh, uh, German colleague, uh, the Chancellor Scholz, also quoted the former uh, German Chancellor Schmidt uh, about uh, how to be a political a leader uh, and borrowed a lot of wisdom from there during their conversation. What a coincidence. When you talk about the historical, uh, it is very important. 
particularly when we are facing uh, challenges that uh, many of our generation would feel, wow, uh, paramount. But actually, when you think back at the history, there was a Cold War. Uh, there was also the Second World War. How do you see, uh, Mr. Minister, that China and Germany, with the history they experienced, will be smarter, particularly during today's time? Uh, hope, uh, people don't have an archive, but they have a memory, and they know uh, about the development of China, which is unique in many terms, especially economically and uh, on the side of innovation, but they also know the challenges. And if we combine our challenges, the German and European on the one side and the Chinese on the other, then we can see easily there is a lot to do together, health, food, security, and, and, and. So we have a lot of space uh, to bridge the fundamental difference we also mm. have. Would the Germans' approach in that regard very different from, let's just say, your counterpart across the Atlantic, as uh, the U.S. has been portraying the relationship between China and the United States uh, in quite a geopolitical terms? In this regard, I have a little bit more differentiated picture, but the main thing is uh, we cannot be uh, interested in a new bipolarity on the globe. We cannot be interested in a new Cold War or even more worse. Uh, and uh, that is why I say all parties involved, especially the big powers like China and the United States, should develop an attitude which guarantees our global peace, full development, and make sure that we hand over this planet to our kids and grandkids in a good way and not in a disastrous way. Mm. I noticed that the German chancellor, first thing when he got back home is to have a meeting with his own political party. Of course, you also part of that party and try to brief everybody about the uh, statement uh, made by both leadership, China and Germany, regarding the nuclear issue. Now, sir, what is your response uh, to that statement uh, made by both sides in their readouts? One of the most important elements of this visit, uh, and uh, I uh, greatly appreciate uh, the common statement and your president's uh, clear announcement uh, that everybody uh, will not accept any kind of nuclear threat. But when you look at what is going on, for example, uh, between Russia and Ukraine, do you see there is any hope that things might be de-escalate as a result of efforts from all sides and with the condition that uh, efforts from other sides are not going to what the Chinese usually call add oil to the fire? Uh, nobody should add oil to the fire and China for sure will not do so. Um, therefore, I hope there will be a more and more active role in China, not necessarily visible on the international stage, but uh, it is in our best interest, including the Chinese interest, as far as I know, uh, that uh, we try our best uh, to end this war as soon as possible by providing international pressure and maybe the one or other incentive uh, to make sure that all parties involved uh, come to an end. And how much will the visit made by the Chancellor and the joint statement uh, put forward by China and Germany together this time regarding the nuclear issue be able to push the agenda and the willingness on the European continent to more efforts for peace and not tit for tat furthermore? Yeah, uh, the Europeans do what they can do. And uh, I also, as said, appreciate very much uh, the very clear statement of your president, uh, hoping that this, uh, not by public debate, but by uh, strong diplomacy and strong political effort, will help uh, to end the war as soon as possible. Mm. It is not easy when we say the European continent, because uh, uh, opinions are different uh, and varied. And determinations, the degrees uh, in different directions are also vary. So, so how do you see uh, Germany's role now in the EU uh, and also with other counterparts inside Europe on the issue of uh, Russia, Ukraine? What role will Germany play? Well, Germany is uh, playing a very constructive role together with other European nations within the European Union and, by the way, within NATO. 
uh, everybody should know uh, that uh, the unity among the European nations uh, and uh, within NATO, if it comes to Ukraine, is a very strong one and uh, cannot be split. Do you see the coalition government will be able to uh, speak in one voice and a voice that is constructive? Uh, the voice of politics uh, under democratic uh, rules of the game, if I may say so, uh, is uh, the, the real voice of politics is decision and substance and content. Uh, there is a public debate. Yes, I know. I, sometimes I'm not happy about these kind of debates. But in the end, what counts is content and decision making. And that is, is good. Is this trip made by German Chancellor, which has been pretty much, if you look at uh, the German public opinion, the press coverage, and also the politicians' uh, narratives, uh, uh, sounds like a quite a successful. Is that going to give him more weight in the overall discussion? To what degree? Uh, I think uh, Mr. Scholz, our chancellor, has demonstrated his weight. He did not gain additional weight, but now some people see clearer that he has it and he has the capability to lead, as he did in, in the Costco case uh, in Hamburg, as he did in several other cases. So uh, the chancellor maybe sometimes is not perceived as the leader, but he is leading. Mm. Now, since we talk about the cases, uh, let's, let's work on that, uh, some of these examples. The Costco case, uh, uh, now about 25%, if I remember, sir, of the rights of an operator uh, for uh, the Hamburg uh, port. Uh, of course, this is uh, relatively different from the earlier proposal. Uh, is that settled already at this point? That depends on the answer Costco has to give on this uh, government decision in Germany. Uh, I hope it will uh, be an agreement on uh, all, uh, among all parties involved. But the background is, and uh, we have to be precise, uh, Costco is shareholder in, in different sizes, uh, different shareholding percentages in uh, many European harbors as well as European companies. Mm are uh, shareholders in uh, container terminals and so on in Chinese harbors. That is reciprocity. And uh, unfortunately, some people, even some political decision makers, do not know about the facts. And uh, you cannot do good politics without facts. There has been fear about the disruption of global supply chains. The chancellor, before he's making the trip, he was also writing editorials. Uh, for the German press, talking about his goals of visit. Among them uh, is to make sure that Germany understand the changes going on in China. Now, uh, with your knowledge, uh, how much better that understanding is and how much more determined do you think uh, he could be at the end of this one-day trip about China-German cooperation, both in bringing sustainability to the global supply chain and certainly to bilateral uh, business and economic ties. Uh, let, me, let me take two examples. The one is global supply chain. We have to make them more div diversified. We have to make them more resilient, which is in the interest of all economies, all nations uh, involved. Uh, and uh, therefore, it's not to talk about decoupling or some kind of economic, political, or other divorce between two nations. Uh, it is just uh, to make uh, the dependencies better understood and uh, to make the supply chains more resilient. That is uh, one. Wait a minute. Is that going to be a game of narrative? Or is it going to be a really huge difference between the two apparent concepts you have been talking about? Yeah, there are people arguing for decoupling, and I'm arguing for uh, more resilience and more diversification, which is completely different from decoupling. And I'm also arguing for uh, widening the areas in which we can cooperate. That was not uh, just uh, something uh, out of the blue that uh, was in the delegation of the chancellor. There were representatives of the German healthcare industry. Uh, and uh, on, uh, of German biotech uh, companies and so on and so on. Because uh, food security, supply, 
uh, health, uh, uh, fight against COVID, and so on. That is an area in which we can even can uh, deepen and widen the cooperation between mm. Germany and China or Europe and China. How do you see the mutual trust, the state of it between China and Germany now, after that one day trip, yet crucial trip visit? Uh, from my point of view, the level is a good one. There is room uh, to further develop. Uh, but uh, after almost three years without, without direct personal contact, uh, we need a little bit patience. Uh, much more important, we need uh, a strong uh, will and a strong effort to make sure that the relations between Europe and China, Germany and China, are developing well and uh, are not under some kind of, okay, we, we, we look on uh, the other side, uh, other side in brackets, please, uh, as uh, something which is uh, strange and far away. We are close uh, together on this globe, and what uh, China is doing has an important impact on the globe. There, is no, there will be no global uh, effort, uh, no global solution. Uh, no global challenge better to meet uh, without China or even against China. Rudolf Sharpen, the former chair of the Social Democratic Party of Germany and former German defense minister. Sir, what a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.